Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari A to Z Flashback, a series of explorations of the 150 games that make up Atari Flashback classics for Nintendo Switch. Today's game is Real Sports Volleyball, which is a 1982 release from Atari, developed by Bob Polaro and Jim Huther, I think that's how you pronounce it, Jim Huther or Jim Huther, uh, for Atari 2600. Uh, Bob Polaro is better known as the developer behind the Atari 2600 version of Defender, uh, which is not especially true to the arcade version, but is quite a fun game in its own right, so worth checking out. Being a sports game, uh, there's not a ton of history of this one has been recorded around the place, but it does seem to have been quite well received at the time of its original release. Uh, Steve Davidson, no relation, of Arcade Express wrote in 1983 that the game was, quote, a triumph and that it really did play like the sport, and he scored it 8 out of 10 for that. So, let's go see if he was right. Let's go play Real Sports Volleyball. Okay, welcome back once again to Atari Flashback Classics. And today, it is the last of the Real Sports games, Real Sports Volleyball, which, um, judging from what I can make out online, seems to have been one of the earliest ones. Um, it's credited for 1982 rather than 1983, like most of them. But, uh, yeah, it's the last one we'll be looking at. And then it's on to Return to Haunted House after that, and a whole bunch of other stuff still to go. But we're making good progress. This is a significant milestone in our complete journey, so I will be glad when it's over. Although I'm interested to check the game out as well. I don't think I've tried this one before. So let's have a look at the manual to begin with as usual. Black and white scan this time around. Uh, always turn the console power switch off when inserting or removing an Atari game program cartridge. Yes, okay. All right, here we are. Atari Real Sports TM Volleyball is modeled after the traditional game of volleyball where two teams hit a ball back and forth or volley it over the net. If the serving team misses the ball or hits it out of bounds, the other team is awarded the... Awarded the what? The point, I guess? <laughs> Serve. Evidently, this was in two-page spreads uh, before with like six languages, five or six languages. Serve. If the receiving team misses the ball or hits it out of bounds, the serving team is awarded one point. Figure A shows you a typical real sports volleyball playfield. The team must score 15 points for the two-point lead in order to win the game. Gameplay continues until this is achieved. The computer randomly awards the first serve to either team. To pick up the ball, move your joystick until a top player connects to the ball. Press the red controller button to serve. Move your players to meet the ball as it comes over the net. In standard games 1 and 2, your team will set up the ball by passing it back and forth between players before hitting it over the net. In these games, the setup consists of three hits unless you spike the ball. Pressing the red button as your player meets the ball will spike the ball, sending it faster and lower over the net. A player must be at least halfway to the net in order to spike. Okay, so we've got some creative use of the single fire button on the Atari controllers uh, for this one. Use your joystick controllers with this Atari game program cartridge. Uh, use the joystick to move your two players in unison around the court. Press the button to serve the ball or spike the ball. I guess they knock it back and forth between them automatically then. Uh, a difficulty switch is determine the speed of the players. When your difficulty switch is set to A for advanced, your players move slowly. When it's set to B, they move fast. Okay, we get all that. So the game select matrix, game number one is one player with setups. Game number two is two player with setups. Game three is no setups, one player. And game four not sure I 100% what, understand what they mean by that, um, but, uh, well, we'll take a look. Let's give it a go. One play with setups. Game reset and begin. So, I am the bluey purple team over on the side, and like a lot of the other real sports games from this period, you control both players at the same time with one joystick. So, pick it up, and then we serve it over the net. And we miss it. Oh, this is fiddly. This is very fiddly. <laughs> okay, I get it. So if you press the fire button, that will knock it straight back. Whereas if you just catch it, that will do setups, I guess. Brr. 
Oh, it's really hard to catch. <laughs> Actually, you don't have to be as accurate as I thought. You just have to be sort of in the vague area of it. Still no point for us. Oh, this is this is tricky. Come on, bring it on. Yeah, I get it. I'm not 100% clear on the execution, though. So, like... How do you aim it? Is the thing. I guess it's to do with which angle it sort of bounces off your player. Or where your player is when you hit it. Yeah, I'm in some trouble here. <laughs> But I can see this being fun, which is the important thing. It's simple without being overly simplistic. That's the trouble with some of these real sports games is that they are so simple that they're not very much fun. With this, you've actually got a surprising amount to think about. Getting a bit more of a feel for it now. We got a point. Yeah, you really don't have to be super accurate with where you are to catch it. You just have to sort of be in the rough vicinity of where it's going to land as long as you're as long as you're vaguely near the shadow of the ball you're all good now we're cooking yeah oh they've completely lost all ability to deal with the serve down the middle oh he says losing his serve come on Oh, no. Hitting it down the middle seems to be a good strategy because they, they, they just can't reach it. You know what? This is this is all right. I have played considerably worse games in this series to date. And there's some nice little touches in this as well, like the way the you got the sea in the background and the sound of the waves. I mean, I know it's just the 2600 making noise, but that's a nice little atmospheric touch. And the way the sun is sinking down behind the horizon as the match continues. It's a nice bit of atmosphere and a surprising amount of polish for a game from this era. Oh, no. Oh, it's all over. Well then, okay. So, that's one play with setups. What does one play without setups look like? Let's see what happens with this. So, in this one, we serve it, you chuck it over, and then you just bat it back and forth, I guess? Okay, so if you play it like that, it's more like... 
it's more like a weird take on Pong slash tennis. So it doesn't really resemble volleyball quite so much. But it does offer an interesting different twist on the gameplay. Yeah, that gives a surprisingly different feel to what's going on by not having those setups. I'm not sure it's better because it, it feels much harder to sort of get the ball under control and figure out where it's going. But it's certainly a different way to play. It's directing the ball after you hit it that I don't really understand because there doesn't seem to be a, a reliable way to do that. And there's also just a limit to how high you can go on the screen. Which means that there's certain shots you just can't reach. <laughs> I think what you need to try and do in this is is try and not think of it in 3d because it's tr obviously trying to do a sort of 3d perspective with this this kind of side on view but the more you try and think of it in 3d the less likely you are to hit it if you just think of your dudes as pong bats pong paddles i should probably say it works a little bit better Yeah, because it's not really bearing in mind perspective when it works out if you're actually hitting the ball or not. It's just, is the ball colliding with your player sprite, I think. Is the ball colliding with the player sprite before it's bounced, I think, is the criteria. Yeah, that's how it works. You've got to get in there before it lands and knock it back. That's it. Right. Now I understand how to play this mode. I will still lose. We got a point, though. First point of the game. First blood. Nice. It's nice to see a real sports game actually acknowledging the concept of out existing as well. <laughs> Which real sports tennis most certainly does not do. I can see this being pretty fun with two people. Once you both got your head round the core cool mechanics. And you understand how to play it. I can see this being pretty fun. Because it's accessible, but it's just different enough from other sort of Pong likes to keep it interesting yeah and just that little bit of extra graphical polish it's got going on as well it makes it quite appealing I mean I know that side of things is all relative when you're talking about Atari 2600 games but you know you got human characters who are recognisably human. With some reasonable animation going on. You've got a visual setup that actually looks like a beach. You've got that nice sunset effect going on. Oops.
Give me that. No! Oh, it's gonna be tight. Oh, you bottom player. I'm not paying attention to you, but I'm going to decide that you are the one who sucks. <laughs> That's the trouble. This would actually be easier if you just had one player to navigate around the court. But you do not. So you have to bear in mind the areas that you can't quite reach. And make sure you're covering those with the other player as much as you can. Oh, failure. Come on, hit it. Nice. We're right down on the wire, this one, isn't it? Oh, no. All right, come on, get it past him. Good job, bottom boy. No, bad job, bottom boy. Oh, no. It's all going wrong. Bottom boy is on the case. Forcing them to knock it out. Bollocks. <laughs> Partner lets me down once again. And I let myself down once again. Come on, I can't allow them to win. It's not acceptable. Equalised. Can we pull ahead? No, we cannot. Oh, piss flaps. Alright, come on, equalise. Pull ahead. Oh, I can't reach that one. How am I supposed to do that? <laughs> Bollocks. I'm only going to get one more point to win. Unless I equalize. I'm getting alarmingly invested in this now. I I don't know how you deal with that. When it's right up there. Because you just don't seem to be able to reach it. Well, that's a loss. That's alright, you know. I mean, it's dead simple. Because that's all there is to it. There's nothing else you can change about that. Apart from the player speed. Um, That's, that's pretty fun. I, like I say, I can see that working quite well with two players. So that's uh, that's one to give a go with your friends uh, if you ever see them ever again. <laughs> anyway, that was Real Sports Volleyball for Atari 2600. The last of the Real Sports games we will be looking at on this series and not before time. So next time we will be looking at something completely different, but still Atari 2600 related. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Thank you.